The era of adventures where adventurers from all over the world create their own adventures and stories, the gate a mysterious portal in which dangerous and horrifying monsters appear. Many adventurers died in the gate while many gained fame and glory. To make their own stories, for adventures lands on the harbor city lith, the city where adventurers begins. Raymond, Walker, Taryn, and Charlotte. Before beginning their adventure, Walker suggests that they need a slave to act as a bait as they don't know what will happen inside a gate. So they approach a slave market run by Gaffer Merchant Union. There they buy two healthy slaves and heads to the gate. Walker marks a mark on the outside of the gate to notify others that they are occupying it. They enters the gate. As it is his first time Raymond gets nervous, but Walker calms him down as he says there is no need to worry as the gates are formed far from the monster residence, and they should look for exit gate first. Suddenly Charlotte gets attacked by a monster from behind. This panics everyone as they look around they realizes that they have been surrounded by monsters. Walker fires a fire arrow at the monster who attacked Charlotte and instructs others to tie the slaves to the tree as they can't handle all of them. They leaves the slaves behind and runs for their life. This one's a failure. Clearing it isn't important. We need to hurry and find the gate out first, says Walker. Raymond panics, but Taryn scolds him to get it together and focus on the present as they are going to make it together. Taryn didn't get to finish his sentence as he gets smashed to the ground. Seeing this, Walker shoots a fire arrow but gets eaten by another monster. Raymond gets half eaten but sees one of the slaves they abandoned on the top of the tree. Raymond asks him to save him, but the slaves declines as it was too late for him. Raymond curses him to death as he gets swallowed by the monster. Now the monster attacks the slave, but he pierces its heart with one shot. Now enough with the background story. This is the MC or the hero. The world at the brink of destruction. The king of the dragons Gornthale has arisen to the surface. The center's next has fallen, the signal's knights, the resistance, the cross hunters, all the adventurers, and the six heroes that the people saw to their hope, all are dead. You are our only hope, the last adventurer, El Palm. And thus they embarked on their final adventure, but sadly things didn't turn their way. All of them got wiped out, and we see our hero injured gravely kneeling on the ground. Is it over for me, the hero thinks. Everything is over. All my comrades sacrificed their life for me, but all I was able to do was cut a single head. The hero shouts loudly, as if I will accept this. Gornthale, you are going down with me. And the hero gathers all his power to one shot. But he reaches his limit as he vomits blood and the king of the dragon kills him. Next thing he knew, he was imprisoned as a slave and someone yelling at him. You have quite the determination for life for a mere slave, says the bald man. He can't believe what he saw. The merchant who was in charge of him was yelling at him, and the surroundings matched his memory as it was the slave market. He gets punched in the face for not listening to the merchant. After a while, he realizes that he has been transported back to the past. That is a second chance for him. Then he got bought by Taryn and others, and thus he reached here. He takes the staff of Terran which possesses the skill, fire arrow. He sees something shining on the shoe dropped on the ground, and from it he gets a telekinesis ring. Suddenly monsters cornered him from out of nowhere. He tries to kill them, but instead his spear gets destroyed. So he unleashes the fire arrow, but it was getting very difficult to kill them one by one due to their numbers. So he uses telekinesis along with a fire arrow, and kills them in one blow. At the town the people were shocked to see a bait roaming alone. MC decides to go to the merchant guild. At the merchant guild the executive gets informed that a slave has returned back to them without a single scratch and all the party members who accompanied him died in the dungeon. That's unusual people who've been reduced to slaves because of debt will end up as bait again. Even if they come back alive. Yet he came back. Then the informer tells him that the slave has unlocked the first circle and hearing this shocks the executive and asks the informer to arrange a meeting. Under Queen Cygnus, the status of a slave shall not exist, that is but some superficial talked humans have always been slaves to Meso. If they fail to pay back what they borrow, they make up for it through labor. On the day when my only family, my father, collapsed after an illness, 
I became one of them as well. Black Moss, the herb that I purchased from the Gaffer Merchant Union on credit. The Merchant Union set the price for it at multiple times than the current price. 10,000 mesos, and the court ordered me to do labor equivalent to the amount for the Merchant Guild, and thus I was exploited for about six years. At the meeting, Abby's, was it? The left-hand man of Rackin, one of the executives of the union. I've caught a good fish, El Palm thought. The Abbeys agrees to the term that he will change his contract into one for an F-rank adventurer. This surprises El Palm, as he was not sure that they will accept his demands. But he had no intention of playing along with them. So he asks for an E-rank adventurer contract. Abbeys laughs and says, Do you really think that the pathetic survival ability of yours will work in higher ranking gates? And it seems you take us for idiots who'd offer a risky contract to someone who'll die without even having to pay our money back. That's it. Bones of twelve parties are buried over there. Prove your worth and I'll do whatever you want. Thus he joins a party to raid the gates. Nice to meet you. My name's Chev. My position's Tank. I heard about you from Mr. Abbey's. So you were a baiting slave, huh? I don't care about stuff like that. So don't worry that the same goes for my comrades. Enough chit-chat. You must have heard it already, but for this mission, the goal isn't hunting monsters. Our goal is to safely retrieve the items left behind by the twelve parties who were annihilated before us left behind and then, we just have to return the items we retrieved to the Union. I heard. They're giving three thousand meso for each item. Now let's make some money. Inside the gate, they sets up a base on top of the tree as it was becoming darker. The black-haired dude tells the MC that he can rest up as it is their job to set up the base. They camp there at night and decided to set off in the morning. At night, the leader comes near El Palm, but he gets no response. Jeez, you're so damn cautious. Did you forget what we mixed in his food? That sleeping herb could even make a mush mom weighing hundreds of kilograms fall asleep. By the way, a fire arrow wand? That's at least 10,000 meso. By saying this, the black-haired guy stabs the MC. But to his surprise, he finds that he stabbed a trunk. This shocks everyone, and then suddenly the base gets attacked. A huge fire starts spreading up. The leader instructs others to protect the food and other supplies. Suddenly, they notice an eye staring at them. It was a gold slime, and the slime attacked the base. The adventurers jump outside and start running for their life. El Palm was seeing all this in a nearby tree. They shouldn't have been so kind if they wanted to trick me. In a gate where over 12 parties that have veteran adventurers fail, they'd welcome a bait like me? It's obvious they were up to something he thought. Damn it. That type is disadvantageous to us. If my guess is right, that thing is a gold slime. It's not something you normally see in the maple world. It's a rare boss monster that only comes out of red gates. That thing's body is Asio. So it's the worst matchup possible for melee adventurers like us. And the most dangerous thing is it has a long range attack acid arrow. Chef shouts. The black haired guy suddenly rushes towards the gold slime because every attack has a timeout and as it has already used the skill, it will not be able to use it for a while. But his calculations go wrong as he gets killed by the acid. Others also get killed by this manner. Chev, you were not completely wrong, but a gold slime eats items and grows stronger accordingly and the cooldown time decreased as it got stronger. That thing's abnormal size and almost non-existent cooldown on Acid Arrow. Now I know why the parties that came before have all failed. That thing is already out of its class. That thing has grown so much that it could be a fit for a yellow gate, which is two levels above a red gate. This mission is already a failure as the items cannot be retrieved, but not for me. He shoots the gold slime at its core, but it deals less damage due to the high magic resistance. If it's like this, I only need to hit four or five more arrows at the same spot. The gold slime shoots the acid arrow at him, but escapes it using telekinesis and hits the gold slime at the same spot and kills it. 